Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. In today's episode, it's Luminar AI working with color via the black and white tool. Let's get started. Here we are in Luminar AI. Now, I started out in Photoshop and just brought my image into Luminar, and we're only working with one tool inside of uh, Luminar today, and that is the black and white tool. Now, the black and white tool can be used for a lot more than just black and white conversions. It can really be effective for color images. For instance, we can get very creative with color. We can solve color type issues. And I have several images to uh, work with today to show you these different things we can do. But we're going to start out with this one. Now, we can do typical things like convert the image to black and white. And of course we can use this luminance slider to tweak the image, you know, like any reds you find, if you move this to the left, they'll get darker. If you move it to the right, they'll get lighter. So you can play around with these uh, luminance sliders for all the different colors and find the right look for your black and white image. Okay, so that's your typical things that you can do. Let me go ahead and reset this tool though, but I want to work with color today. So this is cool and I'll show you how to do this. You do have to convert your image to black and white first. That's important or this tool doesn't even work. So now we've converted our image to black and white. The first thing I want to do is work with saturation, not luminance. So let's uh, click on saturation here. Now, this is really fun because what we can do here is we can start to bring color back into the image. So check this out. I'm going to take the red and start to slide this up and see how I can start bringing reds back in. And already this image is taking on a very nice, creative look here. Okay. And I really like it. And I could say, I'm done right here. This looks really cool. But let's play with some of these other colors and see. And what I like to do is just play around with the different colors and see if I can come up with something creative. On this image, I'm looking for something more creative. I have some other images that I'll show you how I can uh, solve color type problems with those with those images. But let's just play around a little bit. And any blues in here? You know what? I, I think I'm going to leave my blues off because I like this look here. And... Well, that was actually cyan. Now let's go to blue. Now I'm going to leave the blues off. Is there any magenta in this image? Yeah, there's some pinks in here. Maybe I'll let a little bit of that pink show through. Now this is cool. After we've done the saturation, now we can come back to luminance. And then we can work with the luminance values of these colors. For instance, the reds. If I move this to the right, my LEDs, reds become lighter. If I move it to the left, I can darken my reds. So this is really, really a great way of uh, making color adjustments here, I think. So I like to start out again with saturation. And then I tweak up my luminance values of those colors. And then you can go back and forth and go back to saturation again if you need it. But just play around and strike the right balance. Let's play with our pinks. Maybe I'll darken my pinks up just a little bit. And we've gone from this image to this image here. So that's a creative way of using the uh, black and white tool for color images. Now let's move on to another example. This is a fun little image here. And by the way, you can download all these images. These are free stock images. Uh, just go in the description below and find those images and download them and try this out for yourself. I think you'll have a lot of fun with this. It's super easy to do and super creative. So let me go ahead and click black and white again. And we're going to convert to black and white first, just like we did before. We're going to jump right into color. So I'm going to click on saturation. Now I'm going to take the reds first and slide this up. Now you can start anywhere you want, obviously, but let's pull up the reds. And you notice the more I pull it to the right, the more reds we start to pull into the image. I think I want a, like a muted uh, flower image here. So I'm going to keep my reds back a good bit. Uh, let me go back to the original image. I didn't like all this yellow and green in here. I thought it was a little overdone. So I want to try to tame that down. So this, this, this uh, example is more of a creative and a uh, solving a color problem issue all at the same time. So let's play with our yellows here. And I just want to bring a little bit of that yellow in. And already that looks really cool. Maybe if I add a little bit more red. Yeah. That, that's fun. I like it. Now, let's see if there's any greens in here. Yeah, there's some greens in here. I want to add a little bit of green in here. And cyan. Yeah, there is some cyan in there. I'll, I'll throw some. Well, it's not a lot of cyan, but I'm going to bring it up a good bit here. Now, let's try blue. I believe there's blue in here. Is there blue in here? There's some. Not much. 
but we're going to drag this slider a lot. I'm going to drag it almost the whole way to the right because I like that little bit of pale baby blue in there that looks really pretty. Now let's play with magenta. Is there any magenta in here? Yeah, we can bring up magenta and I do like that in the flower. I don't want to go too crazy and make it too pink, but I'm just going to pull it back. Maybe somewhere right around in there. And then I like to come, as I said on the previous example, come back to luminance. And now let's play with the luminosity values of each one of those colors. So if I move this to the right, I'll make the reds lighter. If I move it to the left, I'll make them darker. But can you see how much uh, flexibility you have here? So you can really tailor this uh, image just the way you like it. And I might make those reds just slightly, slightly darker. I don't want these shadows going too dark here. But I might just take it like to a minus two. Let's play with the yellows. See, we can lighten the yellows up or tone those yellows back. They were pretty good right where they were. Let's try the greens. I might just pull the greens a little to the darker side of things. Just a little wee bit. And now the... Let's try the cyan. Do I want to lighten that sky up? Not really. I think right where it was. Now, if you, I believe if you double click these, yeah, if you double click the circles or the dots, whatever you want to call them, this will uh, reset the uh, slider for you. Let's try the blues. We want to lighten the blues. Nope, I don't want to mess with that. I'm going to double click it and let's try the magentas. Do I want to lighten them? Yeah, I might want to lighten them up. I want this image to have that nice open air, beautiful, soft look to it. Now, here's the before. And what I didn't like was all that green. It looked a little garish to me. But now I think I solved the color problem. And I also gave it some creative quality too. Another fun image of these really cool looking seagulls on this rock right here. Now this is going to be more of a creative uh, edit here. Uh, let's go back to the black and white tool. Let's convert to black and white. And we'll go right to saturation. And I like the color of the rock. So I want to bring up the red on the rocks first. I'm going to make this a more soft, gentle picture, I think. So I don't want to go too red on the rocks. But I want a lot of red in there. But maybe I'll start around here. Let's work with yellows. See what we got in yellows. Yeah, there are some yellows in there. I don't want too much of that yellow. But right, right around there. How about green? Not much in green. I'll leave the green off. Now, we definitely have cyan and we definitely have blue. Let's try cyan first. Yeah, I'm going to start out with just a little cyan. Now, I actually like that right there. That looks pretty cool. And let me see. Do I want to add any blue into it? Whoops, I'm not grabbing the blue slider. Let's see, I didn't like all the blue that was in there. So, I don't know. I might... If I add blue, it's just going to be a very little bit... Maybe somewhere around there. Let me try a little more cyan in there. Yeah, maybe maybe somewhere around there. But take your time and play. Have fun. I'm going kind of fast here. I don't believe there's any magenta in here. No, there isn't so. Yeah, there is a little bit of pink down in here. But I don't think that really works with the color palette. So we're going to shut that off. I'm going to shut that magenta off. I'm calling it pink. But magenta is a pinkish type tone. So let's see the before and after there here. Here's the before and here's the after. Yeah, I love the direction. Now let's play with the luminance. See if we can tweak it a little bit further here. And I think it looks really good, but let's just play with the luminance. Like we can lighten the reds up or we can darken the reds back. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. What do you think? I wish we could communicate, but we can't. So right there. I'm just going to darken them up just a little bit. Not much. Just a wee little bit. Now, I think I may go back and retouch up the saturation. I think it's too strong now. How about the yellows? Let's just see. Go one way. Go the other way, Dave. I may lighten them up a little bit. There is no green. Now, the cyan. Do I want to darken the cyan? Yeah, I don't know. Again, do I want to lighten it? I don't think I want to lighten it. I think darkening it a little bit helps it. Okay, maybe right around there. Let's try the blue, lighten the blue. Don't want to go crazy. And you'll start getting weird artifacts when you really start to pull these up. So be careful there. Now this is just a JPEG image, so 
there will be artifacts in it anyway, so be careful with it. I might just darken the blue just a tiny wee bit, and I'm not going to mess with magenta. So here's the before and here's the after, so I like it. What I might do is just come back to saturation and do I want to ease? I want to pull back on the reds just a little bit. I think right around there. And do I want to add any more blue? Nah, you know what? I don't like it. I'm going to pull that blue back. Even more, I think. Right there. Now let me play with the cyan one more time. I like it. So here's the before and here's the after. I just think it's much more calming now. I like the feel of it. This way, I think it's just a little too loud. And this way, I don't know, it's more soothing. More of a doctor's office picture, in my humble opinion. And now the last image. A nice beach scene with a boat here and a little shed. To me, this has some color problems to it, in my opinion. I think it's just a little too strong on saturation, on the blues and greens, and I like to tone it down a bit. So, black and white tool to the rescue. Convert to black and white. Click on saturation. Let's start out with, this time let's start out with blues, because to me, this is where the problem really lies here. So I'm going to work with the blue to try to get the blue looking about right. Now I'm going to balance that out with the cyans. Just move these two together in tandem just to strike the right balance between blue and cyan. And maybe right there. I'm going to pull, let's pull the cyan back a little. Nah, the cyan's probably pretty good. I'm going to pull the blue back a little bit. I just don't like what's happening up there in the sky. So I'll pull that back just a little bit. And I think that looks really pretty good right there for the blues. I'm happy with that. We'll settle with that for now. Uh, let's see the green on the grass. It was too nuclear, so I definitely want to ease back on that. So we don't want all that green. And you can see the green in the building here, too. It's like, yuck, I don't like it. So I'm going to go with maybe, that's too much, Maybe, maybe right there. And then we're going to work with yellows. Now, I like this little bit of yellow on the shed here. I think that looks nice. I don't want to go too strong with it, but maybe right there. And now the reds. There's some red in the sky, so let's start to pull up on the reds. Yeah, and that red warmth in the sky is nice. And it's, it's blending with these yellows in here, too. So it's a blending game when you're playing with these sliders here. And just trying to strike the right balance. Now, that looks nice. Now let's play with Lumen. Let's just see if we can tweak it up further. Let's start out with the blues. Do we want to lighten up the blues? I might just lighten the blues a little wee bit. And now let's work with the luminance values of cyan. So I'm going to go to the right, lighten it, go to the left, darken it. Sliding back and forth. You're not going to break the sliders. Keep working them. And whenever you think it's right, that's when it's right. Okay, somewhere right around in there. This is real-time editing. So, uh, greens, do we want to lighten up the grass any? Maybe just a little bit. Well, and I'm also watching the building here, so I don't want to go too crazy. I don't want that to get too light. Maybe just a wee little bit. So I'm looking at the grass, I'm looking here, and I still think the grass might be too green. And now how about the reds in the sky? I think the reds look pretty good where they are. So I'm just going to double click on the circle or the dot, whichever you'd like to call it. Let me go back to saturation one more time. And maybe the grass, I might pull my saturation back just a little wee bit. Yeah, maybe somewhere right around in there. Now here's the before and here's the after. So big difference, right? And so that's kind of what I mean by solving problems. The colors, I thought, got a little bit overboard for my taste. Now... Whoever uh, did this image originally, they may like it that way, but we all see things differently. But this is about you. You're the editor and you have to edit it the way you like it. Whether I like it or not is really, doesn't really count. What really counts is what is inside of you and what you as the artist see. But this is kind of my vision for here, right or wrong. It's, it's really, it's, you know, it's all up to the viewer if they like it or not. And if they don't like it, that's okay. And if they like it, that's great.
but there you go. To me, the bottom line with creativity is you, as the artist, have got to be happy at the end of the day. So make art for you. And if again, if others like it, that's great. That's icing on the cake. Now, I started all these images out in Photoshop. So this last image, I'm just going to come up here and click Apply. That'll uh, save this out and send us right back into Photoshop. And then we'll take a look at all four images and see the before and afters. We'll start with the boat and the beach. Here is the before. In my opinion, way too much color. This is a problem uh, solving correction with the black and white tool. And here's the after. So I like that direction. Here's our next image. This was the uh, seagulls. Here's the before and here's the after. So just a little more calmer looking, more of a creative look to it. And let's try this one, this flower right here. This was creative and also fixing a color issue in my opinion. I didn't like all this yellow and green down here in the grass. And after the black and white tool in Luminar AI, we came up with this and I like it. I think it came out really nice, at least for my taste. And now the first picture, which was really an awesome picture. Okay, so here's the before. And I like it just the way it is. Lots of color. Beautiful. Love that hairdo. Is that real hair? Probably not, but it could be. Uh, anyway, so here is the after the edit. And I just took a more of an artistic change in the color here. And so this is more of a creative way of using the black and white tool in Luminar AI. Well, there it is, everyone. Getting creative and solving color problems with the black and white tool inside of Luminar AI. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like. Share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click the bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, yes, you will be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.